Hey everyone, it's Elijah, also known as Sovereign and Supreme. In today's video, I'll be sharing 10 meditation ideas for beginners. Now, please let me know if you can hear me and I will adjust my video accordingly. But I just have 10 ideas I'd like to share with you if you or someone you know is interested in meditation and all of its perks and benefits thereof. So first and foremost, I like to say you can start doing meditation no matter if you've already done it before or if you've never done it before. Which brings me into my first point, right or wrong. Right or wrong simply does not exist in regard to meditation. It's your own unique experience and it is a very subjective experience at that. So it's a matter of gauging what feels right or wrong to you, but yet and still there's nothing you can do to necessarily mess it up. This is important to recognize because a lot of times in society we're taught, you know, it's either this way or that way, my way or the highway, but a meditation is truly the best of both worlds and it's a matter of just being you, being mindful of what works and what doesn't via a series of trial and error. Number two, Rome wasn't built in a day. If you're expecting Rome in one day or one night, look elsewhere or keep building your empire, or not your empire rather, but your kingdom, but rather your kingdom. Focus on your progress when you're meditating because that is what's necessary if you are to build Rome in your image. And the great thing about meditation is sometimes that image is revealed to you without you even having to try. It's a matter of not trying or doing, but rather just being. Brick by brick, stone by stone, piece by piece, vision by vision, image by image. That is how you build Rome in a day. And one thing I would recommend for meditation is to just gradually increase your focus. When you first start, there's going to be a lot of distractions. And it may be hard to tame that monkey brain within. But... It's not a sign that anything is going wrong. It's just a sign that you are green in this area. And it's the first time for everything. So if you don't have the perfect meditation by the first try, that is okay. Matter of factly, there is no such thing as a perfect meditation. As meditation is a reflection of you at your most blissful, joyful, and peaceful state. Um, each experience is different, so the more you meditate, the easier it will be not to judge it. But right now, just embrace where you are at if you want to move forward. It is crucial to slow down in order to speed up. Which brings me to my next point, number three, beginner's intuition. In my experience, a lot of times when you're first starting out, you may do extremely great and people call it beginner's luck. Well, I call it beginner's intuition because regardless if you are new to medication or you're, you know, of a current meditator, guess what? You have always been meditating. But we're not always trained on how to meditate mindfully to get the most benefits out of it. It's more on the how and the why, right? So, it's important to just go with your gut and let the experience flow to you without trying to control it. Because the more you try to control the experience, the harder it will be to tap into your gut and go with that flow that it's within and around. So, number four. Knock that broom before it knocks you. I would like to point out that, hey... Rooms are for sweeping, not for thinking. So, 
honestly, like I said earlier, there's no right or wrong way to meditate. And, you know, you can't just take off to Mars. It started with the practice of meditation. So try not to overthink the process and just let it happen. Let go of all expectations with the intent that you are making progress every day in every way. And that is something that's important for meditation. Just consider the context, the experience, and the awareness expanding as you allow yourself to fly. You allow yourself to fly when you take off the weight that's on your shoulders. So, better knock that broom before it knocks you. Sweep, make progress. Don't just sweep the underlying problems that you have under the rug. Clean it. And meditation is very good for cleaning. It does not necessarily erase all of your issues. As a matter of fact, nothing necessarily will. But it can heal you and bring you into greater alignment with who you are meant to be. And this naturally ties into my fifth point. Five minute rule. If you were wondering how are you supposed to meditate, let alone, excuse me, how long you're supposed to meditate, keep in mind that you should not try to start meditating for 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, or even 60 minutes when you're first starting out because you have not cultivated that level of awareness. You have not cultivated an attention span to sustain and actually enjoy the experience. I always like to say that, you know, pain or joy can come up in your experience. That's why it's important to try not to compare each experience to the next. Because, you know, it could be adjacent to one another, but it's not going to be the same. So it's just trying to get to a point of non-judgmental acceptance. And as you'll hear me say throughout this video series... It's not the duration that matters or counts, but rather the frequency. So if you can only meditate for one minute a day, do that. Meditating for seven minutes, just seven minutes a day, sorry, just seven minutes a week is better than, let me rephrase that, okay? Seven minutes a day is better than just doing seven minutes a week on one day. It's important to cultivate the state of awareness in regard to consistency. Because the more you cultivate mindfulness, the more benefits you're going to experience with meditation. So this is an investment in yourself. It is not a get it's not a get rich quick scheme. It is you taking that first step to meet your higher self. And a higher self will, you know, congratulate and reciprocate that behavior as every action is met with an equal and opposite reaction. So, you know, actually number six, my next point ties more to number four. But I'll just keep rolling with the punches. Number six, think less, feel more. In Western civilization, we tend to just go with what our head is telling us, but we ignore our hearts. If something does not make sense, if it's not practical, if it doesn't smell, if it doesn't pass the smell test, rather, we just throw the shit out the window. If it, you know, we don't believe it, if it sounds woo-woo, we say to hell with that. And honestly, you're using a little bit of faith for meditation to work, a little bit of heart chakra. And when you are meditating, if you want to get in tune with your heart chakra, I would recommend that you actually touch your heart, one hand over the other, so that you can emanate that heart energy, that heart space of love, of connection, of 
emotional intelligence. So, you know, this is widely perpetuated myth that we just use one side of our brains more often than the other. We use both sides of our brains. And as a matter of fact, that is our natural state of awareness, especially when um, our brain functions are everything but impaired and, um, you know, imbalanced. And that's the key with meditation is getting your chakras or energy centers aligned with one another. And when you're first starting out, this may be more of a challenge because you may be used to that other state of awareness that is not as balanced and um, chemically and spiritually aligned. So I'm not saying to just only focus on your heart because it's important to maintain that balance. Try to find that balance between the head and the heart. And after that, just do it. After you just do it, then it's important to just to be that balance you seek and set the intention that sooner or later, that's exactly what you're going to get. So I will be talking more about this later, but meditation is an excellent catalyst for whole brain synchronization. Okay, number six, number seven, I like to address the fact that there is an irony in out-of-body experiences. In my experience, sometimes it feels like, you know, you're floating off into space or you're drifting off into interstellar um, territory. One limb may feel bigger than the other. You may experience vibration um, in your bones, in your skin, in your joints, your ligaments, or wherever. Sometimes it's psychosomatic, other times, you know, it's the real deal. But the irony here to me is that you're always vibrating, but it seems like you are vibrating at a faster, quicker frequency when you are meditating. Not because you're vibrating for the first time, but because you're becoming more mindful or aware of the fact that you've been vibrating this entire time. And sometimes out of body experience are the opposite of what we stereotypically think of out of body experiences. This doesn't have to do with an exorcism. This doesn't even always have to do with astral projection. But rather you actually aligning with your higher self. And I may feel out of body if you're not used to being in alignment. Because in my opinion, I could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong. Again, what is right and wrong in the name of meditation for meditation's sake. You know, I think we come to earth balanced. It's just societal conditioning that leaves us out of alignment with who we really are. And for that reason alone, I think out of body experiences is actually getting, tapping into our soul and being what serves us best. You know, you could be partially aligned, fully aligned, or not aligned with who you are meant to be, and that is okay. Because meditation is not a final destination, but a timeless journey. And that's the irony about, you know, frequency, not duration. Does time or space really exist? If you're practical, you might say yes. Um, if you're more holistic, you might realize, hey, time and space is a man-made construct. This is no different. Thus, out-of-body experiences are actually a sign of progress. And if you can get to the point where you don't have to judge it and you can say, hey, this, it is what it is. I feel like um, I'm on Neptune. I feel like I'm surrounded by Martians hey, it feels like a black hole is right at my wall in my room. That is okay. However you feel, whatever you think, that's okay. Let it come up to the surface. Sometimes our souls need to be purged. And what can I say? Who's not up for a little journey, a little adventure? It's adventure time. Quite an exhilarating ride. 
Okay, number eight, and I really want you to pay attention to this one. Cannonball. Cannonball into the deep end. For some people, it's important to do that because you really need to step outside of your comfort zone and you have nothing to lose, yet everything to gain. Except the fact that you will lose your false self in the process. Your false self as you are the mountain, not the valley. Anyways, I digressed a bit. Naturally, you think, hey, I need to just stay in one, two, three, maybe four feet of water versus just going into 12 or 15 feet, right? Or even six or nine feet if you can't swim. But just like when you are at a water park or you're surrounded by more adept swimmers, wouldn't you feel more comfortable diving into the deep end? So that's why when you first start meditating, they recommend that you do guided meditation. So you have, you know, practitioners who can um, guide you through how you're supposed to meditate and get the most out of it. Because you are the most impressionable and infectious with the energy you emanate when you first start out. And chances are you will vibrate more in the beginning. Because your body is not used to the higher vibrations being sent into your body. It's like a voltage, you know, a shock wave. Your body has to get used to it as it steps up into the fifth dimension. So, if you're a daredevil like me, you would definitely dive into the deep end and try something that's outside of your comfort zone. And sometimes being counterintuitive is the best way. You know, it's both excellent for implementation and just for the idea alone. So hey, be a little badass and step outside of your comfort zone. Cannonball! Okay. So, number nine. Let's see, where are we? Aha! Uh -huh. Work smarter, people. Be gentle with yourself. Again, to reiterate, it's not going to be perfect. Don't expect perfection. Expect progress. Set your intention on progress and try to be as specific as possible. And then just be it. Be concise. Be precise and be pragmatic about the experience. Meditation is all about self-love. It's all about self-compassion. It's all about self-actualization. And most importantly, the journey to get there. It's an invaluable journey because it's a reflection and, by extension, a projection of your invaluable being. After all, you are whole worthy, divine, and complete. And meditation is the cherry on top, as you'll see, as you gain more experience with meditation. Because meditation brings out the best version of yourself. And I'm not saying it's peaches and cream. I'm saying it's going to help you recognize that you are peaches and cream. And thus, you need to treat yourself as though you are your best friend. Because, as Demi Lovato says, which I think is super stupid, actually, mine's is the only heart, mine's is the only heart that I'll have for life. Even Lady Gaga says, because he made you perfect, baby. You were born this way. So, be gentle with yourself. Accept every attribute of yourself. And just realize that nobody can do it better than you. And finally, number 10, last but not least, into the wild you go. Accept the wild side of yourself. Let yourself off of a leash. How are you going to experience the full, immersive, sensational, provocative, and soul-enriching experience if you are staying inside of your comfort zone and hiding away? No, embrace it. Go into the jungle. Be your greatest version. Allow yourself to get lost in the experience. Be a daredevil. Be a badass. You know? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, in my opinion, you're just better off letting yourself free. Let your inner child roam. It's like going to an amusement park or an aquarium. Or a film festival, you know, a museum, a concert. Allow yourself to get lost in the experience. Live for the moment. 
and step into your high vibe tribe. So once again, there's no right or wrong. Rome wasn't built in a day. Beginner's intuition. Knock on a broom before it knocks you down. Knock on wood. Okay? Five minute rule. Think less, feel more. Out of body experiences are a sign of being in the highest alignment. Cannonball. Be gentle, work smarter, not harder. Be lightweight. Lighter than a feather. Hey. Oh yeah, now, by the way, the higher your vibration, the lighter you feel. The lower it is, the heavier you feel. Feathers and bricks 2.0. And number 10, go into the wild. Let yourself free. Break yourself, fool. Make it. You are a beginner. You're just starting out. But that's what makes you the most special. Because there's infinite potential for you to get everything right. Simply by saying there is no right or wrong. And embracing the fact that you've got this. So I hope that my video helped you. I would like to encourage you to subscribe to Miracle Meditations or MyMiracleMeditations.com. And as always, to join the community and to like, love, comment, and share my YouTube channel, Sovereign and Supreme. You know, it's a real pleasure being out here today in nature. And, you know, I'll make a video about walking meditation because that's what I'm doing right now. Just FYI. My next video will be about how to boost your mood with meditation in different seven in uh, seven different positions that you can try. Positions. Well, until then, take care. Remember to subscribe to My Miracle Meditations and Sovereign and Supreme. Share your thoughts, leave a comment, and let's get things started.